Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at the Tier 7 premium French heavy fighter, the Arsenal BB-10. Hello there, and although I'm making this video in January 2022, uh, the Christmas event is still in full swing, and therefore we're on the snow outside the officer's mess rather than the regular setting. And the Arsenal VB-10 here is a double-engined uh, heavy fighter of French design. It actually made it into production. Four examples were delivered to the French Air Force just after World War II. Now, the, those of you who are paying attention, as I'm sure you all are, will have noticed that these aren't French roundels on the aircraft. They're British. And we'll talk about that a, a bit later in the video. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the statistics for the aircraft uh, in one of my, I hope by now, familiar spreadsheets. If you don't want to look at that, use the link below the video to skip ahead to another section. Here's the spreadsheet with all of the Tier 7 heavies. Um, I'm going to explain how this uh, spreadsheet works, just in case some of you don't know. Use the link below to skip ahead if you already know how the spreadsheet works. And we have, in column C and D, the Arsenal VB-10, and all of the other tier seven heavies occupy two columns that are of their own off to the right, as you can see here. Down the left, we have the uh, characteristics of the aircraft, which you can see mostly in the hangar UI. There is a little bit of extra information for the gun armament that I get from a third party source. And here in this table, we have all of the statistics for each of the aircraft. If we drop down here, if we see uh, green, it's best in class, Light blue is second best in class, light purple third best in class. A gold colour behind the name of the aircraft indicates that it's a premium or a reward, as indeed the Arsenal VB-10 is. For the purposes of the comparison, the configuration was put back to stock. Ordnance where available was mounted. Equipment was demounted. Pilot was sent back to the barracks and the modules are all top. And then just down here, I reverse the logic for worst in class using red colours. And we'll come on to that in a bit. Right, so let's talk about the aircraft statistics themselves. So let's look at the business end of the aircraft, uh, which of course is the gun armament, and it's an interesting story here. The rating is 40, which is not in the top three. However, the cumulative DPS is 720, which is second best in class. So what's going on here? Well, the rating of course is uh, an overall uh, look at uh, the effectiveness of the weaponry. The VB-10, as you've immediately seen, is highly destructive. However, it deals its destruction at relatively short ranges. Uh, its best armament in terms of range are the four 20mm cannons. HS, I believe, stands for Hispano Suiza, so these are British cannons. Uh, and you'll be doing uh, 360 of your uh, 720 total DPS at 2200 feet, which is a bit short range, even for these cannons. If you look at the Hispanos on the uh, Hornet, for instance, you can see the range is very nearly 2500 feet. Um, so just something like 250 to 275 feet uh, more range on these. Similarly with the Tiger Cat with its 20mm cannons. There are aircraft with short range weaponry, of course, KR-94, which is a bit of a specialist aircraft. Uh, does its damage with um, very big weaponry at 1900 feet. Uh, but if we come back uh, to the VB-10, we'll see that the rest of its DPS, the other 360, is done at a very short range, 700, 1,772 feet. And of course, because these are Brownings, that is British machine guns, they haven't recently been buffed for their range, unlike those on the XP-75 Eagle, which now fire at 1,877 feet. And of course, these being American um, machine guns have also received a buff to the damage output which is beginning to make the XP-75 look a bit better. This is an aircraft that hasn't been popular in the past, and we'll discuss that in a moment. So, the armament. Highly destructive, but fairly short range. You want to be up close and personal with this aircraft. Can you do that? Well, for the most part, you can, and we'll go on to explain why in a moment or two. Gun armament, uh, defensive, rear turrets, in other words, none of them the VB-10. Only two of the heavies have these, the Japanese KR-93 and the Tupolev Tu-1. Ordnance. This is not a ground attacking aircraft. It carries no ordnance. It's the only heavy other than the Tupolev Tu-1 uh, not to carry ordnance. Uh, so you will be uh, concentrating on air superiority with the VB-10. Survivability. Think fragile. This is uh, getting on for worst in class figures uh, and certainly it lags an awful long way behind the outlier 
Tupolev Tu-1, but even things like the Tiger Cat, the Hornet, the Ki-93 are uh, considerably stronger than this aircraft. You want to initiate your engagements and win them. You don't want to be in a position of having to turn your tables on your opponent if you can avoid it. Airspeed. Uh, to be fair, most of the heavies are all bunched around the same sort of performance. There's not much to choose between them. The Zwilling nominally is probably best in class with 66 overall rating and a high cruise speed. Uh, but as you can see, the cruise speed is second best in class in the VB10. And even the boost speed, which doesn't feature in the top three, is close enough for instance to the fastest aircraft under boost, the Hornet. Uh, uh, to be competitive, especially when you notice that the boost duration is 40 seconds, which is at least 10 seconds better than all the other heavies in this comparison, bar the Tupolev Tu-1, which has a best in class 445 seconds. Dive speed is also worth noting. Uh, this is an aircraft where you'll be able to use diving to your advantage. It's got the third best in class dive speed. Having said that, most of the heavies can dive pretty well, so bear that in mind. Maneuverability, and it's good news here. Based on the fact that because the Eagle, until certainly very recently, had poor weaponry and therefore is a fairly rare aircraft to see in the game, you probably are going to be the most maneuverable tier 7 heavy uh, in your battles. And use this to your advantage, especially as you need to get up close and personal, initiate contact, and then stay on the tail of heavies. You've probably got enough speed to compete with any of the other heavies and shoot them down. Um, but just be aware that the XP-75 can outmaneuver you if you do encounter one of these. That's worth remembering. If we look at the altitude performance, we come to the what I think is the worst aspect of the aircraft. It has pretty indifferent altitude performance. It has shares similar uh, performance to uh, aircraft that you would be using more in a multi role capacity alongside true heavy play, the Hornet and the Tiger Cat. The lesson here is that you are probably going to find knowledgeable players in other heavies above you and giving you a hard time. If we just drop down and have a look at the worst in class figures and see if we can glean anything from those. As we've already mentioned, the ordnance isn't carried, so it's worst in class. Survivability, quite a lot of red there, emphasising the fact that uh, this is probably one of the weaker aircraft, although plenty of the other aircraft have a fair bit of red on them as well. Figures are fairly bunched for things like damage resistance and fire resistance. Airspeed, as the figures again for the heavies are fairly bunched, uh, although it's got pretty adequate airspeed and that really good boost duration. Um, you can see there's a fair bit of red there as well, even for the 40 seconds boost duration, third best, well, third worst in class, which is actually also second best in class. So don't take too much uh, from that here. Maneuverability, also there's some red appearing, but take it from me, the maneuverability on this is best in class bar that Fisher Eagle, which you won't see too often. You can see an awful lot of red appearing over here, for instance. Uh, however, it is significant that worst in class figures appear for all of the parameters for altitude performance. Uh, and you are going to have to keep your eyes above you and be aware of approaching heavies that may very well be seeking to dive upon you at all times. So where do these figures place this aircraft? Well, I think it places it firmly in the air superiority role. You're looking to destroy other heavies, bombers, dropping down to destroy ground attackers when you've cleared out the top of a sector. And you should be able to use your maneuverability to stay on the tail of any heavy, and you should have enough airspeed to do so as well. Dominate the skies if you can. Just be aware that you're vulnerable from above. Okay, that's probably enough on the numbers. Let's go and look at how I've set this aircraft up in my hangar. Here we are back on the snowy airstrip looking at the VB-10 and just before I talk about how I've set this aircraft up, let's explain why it has British roundels on it and not French ones. You may not be aware that the aircraft in the Europe stroke international tech tree, all of these are premiums, can be assigned to any of the other major nations including the VB-10 and that makes these the most versatile premiums in the game. If you're on a tight budget, this is an ex these are extremely good choices by and large. How would you change the uh, assignment for the aircraft? Uh, make sure you have it selected. Right click on it and you have the change nation option here. For instance, if I want to now change this aircraft to Germany, come up with a dialogue saying Germany. You can choose what to do with the crew, assuming you have the barracks uh, space, bear that in mind. 
And then for 100,000 credits, you can make this a German plane. And to all intents and purposes, you can now would then be able to train, uh, train German crew in it and also use the aircraft as a German aircraft in daily missions, which specify that you should do so. Okay. First thing to notice in terms of setup is that uh, I have specialist configuration on the VB-10, therefore I've got all of the equipment slots and consumable slots available. Let's go and see what I've done with them. Well, the first one isn't very surprising. Cockpit, I've chosen the uh, gun sight. Uh, there's nothing that you can do with the airframe in terms of equipment, so we can pass straight over that. And then we start getting into some really interesting choices, and it's worth discussing these. This is the setup here that I had uh, in the battle that you're about to see. Uprated engine to increase uh, standard speeds, a lightweight power unit for increased maneuverability, and if we look at the forward firing weapon, I'm pumping out um, uh, my shots more quickly because I'm using gas operated action. I invite you to think hard about your playing style. There are very strong arguments for doing the following. For instance, you can remove the uh, combined injection boost system, uh, sorry, the lightweight power unit and put on a combined injection boost system. And if we do that, I just want you to keep a close eye on these figures over here. I think I have one in stock. There we go. So let's just put it on temporarily. And immediately you can see that you have a much increased boost speed. And bear in mind, you've already got very, very long boost. So this will appeal to many players. In fact, it appeals strongly to me, and I will probably be trying out my VP10 with this configuration in the very near future. I suppose you could also um, uh, replace the uprated engine with the combined injection boost system if you wanted to retain maneuverability. Why did the cruise speed go down? Uh, that was one of the bonus characteristics on the lightweight power unit. It increased the cruise speed slightly. So pay attention to your bonus characteristics. This isn't the place to go through them exhaustively. Now the DPS has gone up from the standard 720 with this piece of equipment to 814 and I like that. However, I have adverted to the fact that the weaponry is very short range and I think there's also a very strong argument for using long gun barrels. Now your burst length will go down a bit but bear in mind you've got machine guns so the burst length is very long on those even if they are on the cannons. And this would be a very good choice. Now I've only got an advanced long gun, long gun, gun, gun barrels in here. Just mount that. We can see that the optimal distance has gone up to 2,414. That, of course, will be the cannons, but you'll get a similar increase on the uh, machine guns as well. You may want to consider using this piece of equipment instead of the one, the gas operated action that I have. So it will depend on how you want to fly. It will come down to whether you think you've got enough inherent maneuverability in the aircraft already to be able to be competitive, and probably you have. Uh, in which case you'll go for this kind of build, this pure speed build and extra range potentially to deal damage uh, as soon as you can as you approach other aircraft. If, however, you prefer flying more as a fighter, and that's my strength, you might very well use the build that I've got here. Well worth thinking about. Consumables, it's a single seat aircraft, so a fire extinguisher as usual. Pneumatic control assist for those tight spots where you need a little bit of extra maneuverability. Engine cooling to add 10 seconds to whatever boost you've got, so potentially 50 seconds if you've got all of it. Uh, I like to restart the engine. I suppose there's also an argument for mixture control, mixture control here just to eke out a bit more speed. And I use universal ammunition as usual. Coming to pilot skills, well, first off, it's a crew trainer, so you may not be dedicating a pilot to this aircraft. But I would suggest that you're looking at a minimum to have aerodynamics expert, and then either concentrate on uh, Marksman 1 uh, and Marksman 2 skills. Again, if you're interested in speed, you'll probably concentrate on Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2 instead. But as this is a crew trainer, you may not have the luxury of going for skills that would be appropriate with a VB-10. In this case, I've got my hunter pilot in it, and I'm looking to try and get the hunter pilot to be as accurate as possible with the Aidens, uh, and therefore I like this configuration. If it was for the VB-10, I would almost certainly have not gone for uh, Marksman 2 first, and I would have probably gone for Engine Guru 2. Just bear that in mind. Okay, so that's the VB-10 setup. You've got some things to think about there and, and decide on your appropriate equipment. As you can hear, I'm probably going to try a different setup myself. It's well worth experimenting with this aircraft. Let's go and see how it performed in battle with this particular configuration though. 
So the map for the forthcoming battle is Alpine Gambit, and it's the Narrow Pass uh, variant. Uh, this is, again, a five spots of the die configuration, five sector map. And the military base is in the center, which makes it strategically and tactically by far and away the most important sector on this map, as the other sectors are all garrisons. So the objective here for the te both teams will be to try and hold the military base uh, for as long as possible during the game and probably a couple of the other garrisons. So let's look at the order of battle and there's quite a few players in this game. I'm top tier in my VB10 which is welcome news and I have a grand attacker tier 7 as well and then we have four tier 6 players, another heavy, the ME410, a specialized Spitfire 5, uh, the KR61 and the Tornado and we're up against uh, a Yak9U at tier 7 so long range sniper can do a lot of damage and I'll need to be aware of that at all times. The enemy also has a grand, tier 7 Grand Attacker, an ME265, this one not specialised. But then they do have a pair of heavies, both um, of the highly destructive ME410s, don't want to get in front of those. Another Grand Attacker, the IL-2T, and a very handy S199, which incidentally is another one of those Europe Stroke International Premiums that you can assign to any nation, and pretty good aircraft as well. So a very interesting matchup. Right. So, let's see how this battle pans out. So, it won't surprise you to know that I'm going straight to the military base and try and dominate that sector, and pretty much that's what I'll probably try and do for the rest of the battle, with perhaps occasional excursions into garrisons just to take them as and when necessary, if necessary. So we gain altitude, and I put it into the yellow. I still want to try and be above um, everything, if I can be, even at the cost of some of the aircraft's uh, maneuverability and speed characteristics. Spot the first air defence heavy that guards the military base. Look for the other to, so I can see the pattern. And it's a good job I did, because this is the one that I want to shoot first. It's heading straight for me. Put the maneuverability to use to immediately get on the tail. I shot out its engine so it wasn't able to get away. I stopped it going anywhere near my bomber, and now I'm going to try and do that with the second air defence heavy. And being a P-38, it's quite agile itself. It takes me a little while to sort out where it is and what it's doing, and by which time my team have taken uh, the military base, and I'm now going to clear out the bombers. And at this range, you can see how quickly that's base 720 DPS, 814 in my case, can clear out bombers. And this sector is clear. I've already wandered into a garrison, so I may as well salt that and take it as well. Check what the heavies are doing. One comes into range. Dispose of that. Swing round looking for the other. And in fact, a fighter comes into view first, and by destroying that, I secure the sector. Then I go head on with the KI 88, which declines. Get some good shots on that, and having uh, done so much damage to it, I decide to turn for it, however, uh, I'd set it on fire and it blows up. I decline to go after the incoming uh, enemy aircraft, I'll leave that for the air defence aircraft when they spawn. I want to go back to the military base and make sure that the bombers don't have an opportunity to flip it to the enemy. And as I look at the first bomber, I can see there's a heavy in the distance. Check what it's up to, decide I'm okay to take the bomber, and begin to work it over. Swing round. Looking for that heavy. He's gone away somewhere else, so I can destroy the other bomber. And I do so. Well, in fact, actually, I didn't get the kill there, but I got the major contribution. With Moltrell coming head on at me, Corsair. Don't turn after it. I was heading towards the fighter that was in front of me, that got destroyed by a teammate. The Corsair didn't come after me and has now been destroyed, so I can now go and select another target. We're actually three to sectors to two down, so I need to think about being a little bit more aggressive here potentially. However, we also can't afford to lose the military base. Destroy the Corsair. 
I feel something shooting at me. Decide to employ my manoeuvrability, but I'm pretty sure it's a heavy. Take a bit of a risk there. I take quite a bit of damage, and also I'm set on fire, but I've destroyed the otherwise extremely threatening ME410. And now I'm over another garrison. It's time to see if we can secure this. P40 flies in front of me. It's demolished by the weaponry. I want to take the P38 off my bomber. I do that, and in doing so, that secures the sector as well. Now, one thing I haven't done so far is look below me particularly. Here's probably the first instance. There's an opportunity to take out the ME410. And something I haven't highlighted in uh, the video previously, but I should just mention, the VB10 has a really poor climb rate. So you want to think hard about going low because it's going to take you a fair while to get back up. Don't go down for ground attackers when there are bombers around, for instance. Now, having come to the garrison, we've actually lost the military base. I haven't been defending it. I decide to go and put pressure on by helping take the garrison that's almost flipped here in front of me. And that was an easy job. One aircraft kill was all that was needed. I've got the P-38 and we have three sectors to two. So now it's time to turn our attention to trying to recapture the military base, which is by far and away the most important sector on the map. Easy access to all other sectors, but much more importantly, it fires those rockets um, at enemy sectors as well. And if we don't get it back, we'll be struggling to win this game. Notice that there's a heavy that's coming into the garrison. Don't want to turn that opportunity down. I'd like to get these ME410s out of the game as often as possible. Conveniently, he's flown into the uh, military base sector. So as I kill him, we begin the process of flipping this back to our team. Find the other ME410. I can tell I'm being fired at, but I have the speed to get away from the fighters and multi-rolls that were down below me. But the ME410 has now gone low and I'm in a vulnerable situation. I'm not going to be able to climb out of this. I've flown into a furball. And although it was worth killing the ME410, the cost is my own aircraft. So we spawn at the original spawn point, of course, and now it's critical that we get the military base. As we can see, I'm not getting an awful lot of support from my team. And as I say that, my team then actually captures the military base. So they may not be scoring heavily, but they're doing some of the right things at least. KI-88 doesn't appear to be paying attention to me. As a target of opportunity, I remove it from the game, and in doing so, we get the Wing Legend. I'm still under pressure here. Still only got uh, three sectors to two. It's a very even game. I need to make the difference. I want to secure the military base. I want to get out of these very dangerous ME four one zero. So that's one down. I decide to go for the uh, multi roll that's coming in, which is the dangerous S one 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 nine nine nine. I should say. I always say one one nine. I don't know why. That was the aircraft, I believe, that shot me down when I went low in this sector previously. As you would expect, the enemy is making a determined attempt to get this sector. And I'm going to be equally determined in trying to stop them. Go for the second nearest aircraft, which happens to be the Yak-9U. That's a useful kill, because that's the human player. Employ boost to try and get up to the bomber, bearing in mind that the VB-10 is not the greatest of climbers. the bomber gone. Now we did briefly have three sectors to two as an advantage but we've lost that again. As I remove this bomber it no longer appear, will appear in the game which is going to make uh, my uh, chances of being able to go to another sector safely, that is without losing the military base, much greater.
a very awkward spot. A multi roll above me, an ME410 coming at me. I took a nasty hit from the ME410. I need to get the multi roll out, which I've done. Well, actually, it was a fight of the KI-88, not a multi-roll. Fortunately, uh, the uh, ME410 wasn't able to get a bead on me. Uh, the ace notification went through there, and my team had picked it up, and that was the final aircraft killed by a teammate of mine, and we came out with a very handsome 20,570 uh, uh, personal points and some good medals. So, let's take a look at the outcome of this battle, and as we can see from the center, it's a 5 chevron battle, or a grade 1 heavy fighter, if you prefer. 249,917 credits, all silver, and there were some expenses, just a measly 3,250 credits for losing the aircraft once. Some good bonuses are in force here on both the experience, with 9,412, as you can see, and 1,927 free experience. A couple of tokens coming from the Kosher Dub and the Hero of the Sky badge, but there was also an Ace and a Winged Legend. Look at the personal score tab, we can see that two of the class specific missions were complete, and the third one was complete enough to be able to earn the five chevrons. 20,570 personal points, five sectors captured, was quite active in the game, 20 aerial targets destroyed, which gave me the Ace. 9,078 damage to aerial targets with 34 critical hits coming off the weaponry. Lost the aircraft once. Capture points received 480. That was split. 160 for defending and 320 for attacking. Just a little bit of damage to ground targets, but that was incidental. Turning to the team score tab, we can see that was enough for first place by both personal points and chevrons. Pretty good contribution from the ground attacker. And on the enemy side, a tier 6... Uh, uh, multi roll, that's a really good effort in a tier 7 battle. That concludes my look at the Arsenal VB 10, a versatile tier 7 premium heavy fighter that can be assigned to a nation of your choice and can be built in at least a couple of different ways to suit your playstyle. Featuring destructive firepower and excellent maneuverability, this is a pure air superiority fighter and I think it's a really enjoyable aircraft. Well, I hope you found that interesting, and if you did, you'll come and view my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q, signing out.